Look, good, just here, so you can put the progress just here. I'll really record it, okay. All right, how's everybody doing today? I want to thank everyone for taking your time to come to the presentation. And uh, we really appreciate uh, really being here, the invitation and the opportunity to speak uh, here at the ISET. So this is the first time coming to the ISET. This is my first time in Laredo. So when I was talking to someone, I was, I was saying, you know, it's really hot here. And they were saying, well, it's cold. I'm like, wait a minute, it's cold. <laughs> it must be cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. Well, they were saying it's normally 100 degrees around this time. So I was like, wow, I miss the, I miss the heat. But I'm really, really happy to be here. Now, I have some good news, and I have some bad news. So which one do you want to hear first? <laughs> bad news? Bad news is Dr. Yarbrough will not be here today. So she sends her warm regards to everyone. She wasn't able to make the presentation. The good news, we've got two for one. So I'll do my best to do her part of the presentation. Um, and we'll be talking about supporting underprepared students online. Now, keep in mind, this is designed to be an interactive session. So you know, I'll be asking questions, and I'd like to share best practices. But also, I know we have a wealth of information here. I'd like to hear from you and learn from, from everyone and hear their best practices as well. All right, so we'll start with a little introduction. Uh, Dr. Yarbrough, she works in administration at Argus University in Chicago, where she's the head of the business school there, uh, vice president of student services. And I'm in fun of so I'm assistant professor of business at National Lewis University in Chicago, Illinois, uh, where I teach a number of business courses online, face-to-face, -face, um, and blended or hybrid courses. And before we get started, I wanted to kind of get a gauge of where everyone is as far as online learning face-to-face -face hybrid. So who's taught or is teaching online courses? Okay. Who's taught hybrid courses or the blend of? Okay. What has your experience been with the hybrid course? The students love it, uh, especially because 100% uh, uh, online, they sometimes miss the face-to-face -face, uh, uh, interaction but they don't want it 100% uh, face-to-face um, -face because they also want to experience. I mean, we use Blackboard a lot. That's the, the, the main uh, platform that we use in, in, our, in our university. So we, we have this combination of uh, technology and face-to-face. -face. Sometimes uh, one week uh, we can meet uh, and then the next day we can do like some online assignment and then the next day we, we get together again. That's good. So have you faced any challenges with the highway courses? <coughs> mm, not really. I mean, the, my students love it. It's just that sometimes I guess we have that student that forgets to do the attachments or they forget to submit things on, on, on time. But other than that, they, they, see, uh, they really like it because uh, they get that interaction face to face, but they also do some online assignments. That's, I think, in my opinion, one of the best combinations. Oh, well, that's good. So the best of both worlds. Great. Um, so the, the next option is web enhanced. So who uses what we call a learning management system? Blackboard, B2L, so it's one person. Okay. Do you, you, do you teach face-to-face -face courses as well? Yes. And what is your experience with that? Yeah, it's been, yeah, they, they like it. Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, Sometimes we also use, uh, I mean, we use Blackboard, and sometimes, uh, for example, tomorrow that we're supposed to maybe some teaching a summer session, we're gonna be doing a WebEx. Uh, so it's kind of like the FaceTime or Skyping, so that's uh, gonna be an online class that's gonna be pretty interesting. But most of the time we, 
completely made it up. It, it was, gotcha, gotcha. So really the, the background of this is online learning. So this is great. So this is an opportunity to learn more about online learning um, as far as hybrid learning. And I mentioned the term web enhanced. And what that means is if you're using what they call a learning management system for the course. So the course may be a face-to-face -face course, but a portion of that course is done online where the students have to log in to a, uh, a site to check their grades or to uh, find uh, assignments or the syllabus for the course. So a, a smaller portion of it, maybe 10%, is that fair to say 10%, maybe 15% of the course or less is, has an online component? And what we're talking about today really is dealing with the challenges that we may face really in all of those environments. So it goes from the face-to-face -face environment all the way to the online environment. So um, these are some points that were put together, and this is based on feedback from faculty as well as students. Keep in mind, this is coming from the perspective of the U.S. I know this is a very international audience. From the U.S., Chicago in particular, um, where this is coming from. And uh, our perspective and feedback on this is that many students, they want convenience. I think you mentioned that for the students love the, the fact they're able to be online. And they're also able to come to class, but it's for a, the, the class time is a lot less because they make that up with the online uh, component of the course. The challenge may be that many students may find it, especially particularly in the online courses, they may, may say, wow, this is convenient, I don't have to go to class. However, that perspective that this course is really what they call a self-study course, or another word for that is asynchronous. In other words, they're learning pretty much on their own. They have to do their assignments, they have to log in, they have to check assignments. So, so there's the convenient part that you don't have to go to class, but there's also that other part <coughs> where you do, you have to log in, you have to do the work, you have to do the readings, and you don't have that connection uh, directly with your other classmates or with your, your professor in many cases. So that may be one of the challenges that we see. And then another is many students, uh, I'm gonna pick on you, <laughs> they mentioned they like the face-to-face -face interaction. And you hear that a lot. What I've found, and just to give a, a side note and a disclaimer, in fact, my background in this presentation is more on the technology side. So as far as using social media technology in the, the courses. And what I've found when we talk about students preferring face-to-face -face interaction, I, I found that can mean a few things. It can mean that they want to look at you and talk to you, but it, it can also mean that they want to be able to connect with you. In other words, uh, they want to be able to communicate with you. Um, I don't know how many of you have office hours? How many students come to your office hours? I, I have the same thing, right? So my perspective with the technology is I have office hours. If, if I teach an online course or a hybrid course, have on, uh, office hours, have my cell phone there. But I normally don't hear from students. So when you talk about want to see you face to face, is it, I had to think to myself, is it really they want to see me face to face? Or do they really want to be able to connect with you in a way that they're used to? So that's where I, I tie in using social media, messenger, things like Snap, because that's where students are. So they want to be able to connect with you in some type of form or fashion. Um, one of the ways that I've found useful is using YouTube. So I did a lot of YouTube videos. If we know in the US, the top three social media platforms for millennials is YouTube, Instagram, and Snapchat. So I use that quite a bit. The other challenge that we have are many students, they, they lack basic skills as far as accessing the courses online. So many of us as instructors, we may, we may assume that because 
students are millennials or a different generation, they have a higher level of computer skills, right? But what may be true and what research has shown, millennials have a higher level when it comes to social media. But as far as platforms like this gentleman that I'm thinking of with Blackboard and other learning management systems or programs that deal with education, the instructor actually has the advantage over the student. So that's something that we have to keep in mind. Also, which ties into this, that many are challenged by lack of basic skills. You have to think about there is what we call a disparity as far as technology. Has anyone heard about that here in the US? There's this disparity as far as technology. I heard you not your kid. What, what is that? What is well, especially with non traditional students yeah. that they don't know how to use computers, they don't know how to access Blackboard, they don't know how to submit papers, they don't know how to, yeah, technically sometimes uh, use all the features on either. I use Blackboard because that's, that's the one I use uh, in my class. But yeah, like all these platforms, they don't, sometimes they don't know, they, they keep even using uh, Internet Explorer and they don't. Like as far as uh, all other browsers, it's, it's uh, sometimes it's a, it's a, a challenge. Exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What Dr. Yarbrough, her best practice exactly for that is walking students through how to submit an assignment, explaining what a Dropbox is, giving them something to actually submit, how to add an attachment, how to do a discussion board post. So she spends quite a deal of time, especially in hybrid courses, going through these items to show students how to do those, those functions in that learning management system. So that's very good. Good point. The other gap is with internet access. So when we look at many students, they may not have Wi-Fi or internet access at home. So that will, so that's one. So that limits access to assignments, particularly in an online course, because what? Everything is online. So they may have a challenge in accessing the course, they may have to go to Starbucks, or to McDonald's, or somewhere that has Wi-Fi in order to do their homework. So something that started out to be convenient becomes more of a challenge, right? Because they, they wanted to get into an online course and figure I don't have to go to class, but now the challenge is I've got to have you know, some good Wi-Fi access in order to access my course materials. So that, that causes a challenge. Um, so we see the other is the internet access and the other is actually laptops. So in Chicago, some of the, the well my school, part of the tuition, students get a laptop. Other schools, they rent laptops. They can borrow laptops. But you have to think students may not have a thing computer at home or a, a laptop that they can use to access their courses. Now this plays a role, especially even in face-to-face, -face, like you mentioned hybrid, because if you think back, you've got to, the students would need to access a learning management system in order, even if it's a face-to-face -face course, to check their grades, to, to look at the syllabus, they have to have some type of internet access. So many they may not have that. Now if you look at the demographics, most internet access in the U.S. is done on what? Cell phones, 60% is done on cell phones. So many students will have a, a smartphone, but they may not have a computer. And that smartphone may cause challenges as far as accessing their coursework. The other big one is <coughs> time management skills. So this ties into uh, what we mentioned as far as convenience, Time management. There's no one telling you, well, there's a syllabus, but there's not a set course time. In other words, you don't have to meet twice a week, once a week. You go online, you submit your assignment. And many students may feel a lot, a lot of the feedback that I've gotten, students have felt lost as far as because they don't have that contact with the instructor reminding them that the assignments are due. Now, one of my best practices, particularly in the online courses, if I'm able to design the course, I make sure to have set due dates so they're consistent. So in other words, if there's a discussion post, typically there's two posts. So you'll, you'll have your initial post and 
then you'll have to give a reply. So I'll have the due date for the initial on a Wednesday, for example, and it's set for the whole term of the semester on a Wednesday. Then the final post is due on Sunday, and then I'll have the homework assignments, the quizzes, all due on a Sunday. So you have those set dates, so it helps to start a rhythm in the course, so the students, and you can send out reminders, but the students who start to get in the habit of saying, well, okay, I've got to do my discussion post on Wednesday. I've got to turn in my quiz or my homework on Sunday, so they get used to that. That makes it easier also as an instructor to send out notifications or to talk to students about the due dates. So that helps. The other thing as far as uh, practice that I have <coughs> is, like I said before, I'm being on social media. Our online courses, they have an orientation. So the orientation goes through how you log in to the course, um, where you can get help, tutoring for, for online students. But what I do, I make my own video. And, and what I found from feedback from students is that it bridges the gap. And what I mean by the gap? Well, every course is different. So if I'm teaching an accounting course, our materials and what we'll be doing inside that course shell will be different than an English course, an online history course, or a math course. So I make a video and I go over the important areas that the student needs to know and how if, if we have partner content that we may be using, how they can link and how they can access that. So it gives an extra step for the students to, to kind of bridge that gap in the course. And um, the other portion or other challenge that we've seen is that Many students are anxious about participating. You may think, well, why are they anxious about participating in an online course? Well, imagine if you're on an online course, what are you doing most of the time in an online course? What's different? I'm going to throw in this one out to get some participation. What's different with an online course than with a face-to-face -face course where you come to the classroom as far as participation? Working independently, very good. Very good. What else? You don't get human feedback. You don't get what? Human feedback. Okay, the feedback. Mm -hmm. Instant right. feedback. Instant feedback, okay. Yeah. Good, great, that's good. That's true. That's good. Great. Personal interaction. Personal interaction. Very good. That's good. Personal interaction. Anyone else? How do you communicate an online course? You get a course. You type your answer on the course. You, you say what? You type your recorder on the course. You type your answer. You do what? You <coughs> You send messages, you're writing a lot, right? Even in the math class, you're writing. If you want to post, if you have to do a discussion post, you're writing, right? So many times students are nervous or, or they may not feel confident about their writing ability versus if you're in a class, like right now, we're talking, right? So you can tell me what you think. Think about if this were on Zoom or on Skype, how would you have to let me know what you say? You'll send a chat. Right? So, so there's anxiety that may come as far as participating and writing. So that's, that can be a big challenge across the board. And as far as my best practice lets students know, so majority of my courses are business courses, accounting, we deal with a lot with numbers. So I let them know I'm not going to grade you necessarily on your writing, right? So it's more on the content. Now, English course, that's a different different story, but at least you let students know that to try to encourage them to participate in the discussion board or in the course. Any, any, any thoughts or questions for this? All right.
so there's really three points, three best practices. One is to think about flexibility. Um, the other is teaching presence. And another is community building. So flexibility, teaching presence, and community building. So um, some of the things to think about, you, you want to supplement where you can. And I'm going to give you my best practices, and which may not necessarily be everyone's, I guess, flavor. So I'm very big on social media and you know, YouTube videos. So I'm constantly making videos to have that type of presence. And as we talked to him, so I'm not saying you've got to go out and, and start a YouTube channel or get on Facebook, but what I would say is to start thinking about um, how you can create a presence in your courses. And the other thing is how can you connect with your students, especially the, for the students that, that I have the, the privilege to work with, majority of them, they're on social media. So just like that gentleman back there asked, you know, I asked myself the question, okay, I've got office hours, I've got my phone number here, I'm here, I don't see anyone. And since I've been a professor, I can count on my both hands the times the student actually come to my office hours. But I can tell you that many times a student has contacted me on uh, Instagram or, or sent me a message in Messenger or on Snapchat. You know, so that, that has been many times. And the other thing, just on that note, I, I initially didn't start getting into Messenger and social media, but a student taught me this. And I'll, I'll tell you, this is what got me into this and got me to think in a different way. So I had a student I was working with in a county course, and things were going well. Again, I have my cell phone number, right? Cell phone number, email. For the student to contact me, and I just I didn't hear from the student at all. You know, so I was wondering what is going. We worked on on certain projects in the accounting course. So later on, the student had came to the school, emailed me, and asked me. Said, "Hey, professor, are you on Messenger? Can I mess you know message you on Messenger?" Now I said, <laughs> you know, I said, I said okay. Well, later on I found out her phone was cut off. Right? She had no phone service. Now, if anybody has a smartphone, what can you do on Wi-Fi? You can get on, I see those looks. You can get on Messenger, right? You can get on Messenger. So you think about her phone was cut off. She wanted to communicate. She came to the school to send me an email. For her, it was easier to communicate Messenger. We were able to video conference on Messenger because you can go somewhere where they have free Wi-Fi, like at Starbucks, McDonald's, you know, Wi-Fi and start <coughs> Messenger. So I know that, and, you know, there's many cases students may not tell you, hey, my phone isn't working. Or, you know, I'm not able to access certain things. So that started me using social media more and making myself accessible to the students and I started seeing a lot more of a response and a way to communicate. Because you don't think about things like this. Um, the, the other thing is a mentor of mine who works at Kent State, she was explaining to me, she teaches accounting courses, but of course have 200 students, right? So she's not going to, you know, she doesn't have a chance to get to know all of her students because there's 200 students. So what she does, she got on Snapchat. So remember, top three social media, so what, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. She got on Snapchat, and she'll, she gives that to her students, and she'll post things on Snapchat, and guess what started happening? Students started sending her messages, we're studying for your exam, asking her questions, right? So she was getting more communication than she's ever gotten from her students. So it was a matter of, instead of trying to get the students to come to you, you're going to them in some way. So, so that, that's, that's what I would throw out there for best, best practice. The other is um, having a presence. And one thing is being very positive. I really like, there was a presentation earlier about the growth mindset, fixed mindset. 
That was wonderful. Being positive, it pays dividends, right? Having that growth mindset, especially as a gentleman back here mentioned, many students may not have, have seen Blackboard before. So you, so you have to be there to boost confidence because they look to you. So that pays dividends. The other is one practice, and I, I took that from Dr. Yarbrough, is to go through, to give, give a test assignment for students so they know how to use the Dropbox. So you know that they know how to use the, the, uh, the links in the course, access the exam, know how to take the test. So give them these assignments. It may take extra time, but again, this is one of the things that pays dividends um, for the students. For me, the teaching presence is, I use a lot of videos, so I have YouTube videos for days, and the courses where I communicate and give messages to the students, well as sending out uh, emails uh, to students. Um, <coughs> the other is trying to build and, and working toward building a community. Looking for, especially if it's, if it's an online course, looking for a way to get students to communicate with each other in the discussion board and try to encourage and foster that as well. That's important. Building trust and then you know, giving recognition as far as the online courses, being in the course as much as possible. As much as possible. And then giving it to students. Am I, am I okay with time? I think I'll stop here and just any questions or comments. I got three minutes. Yes, sir. I'm just thinking and, and, and wondering with this kind of approach, at what point uh, do we, you know, prepare the students for transition because the workplace may not necessarily be online. That, that was a good point. It, well, I, I would say that it would be the opposite. So utilizing this technology, having access to this, more and more of the workplace is online. Online training, having access to tools such as knowing how to use Skype or Zoom, I, I think it, it, does, it does help in that sense. I think it's, I, I would say it's the opposite. Uh, for me, I think <laughs> yeah, we, are, we are looking at a situation where they have to work with others, so uh, and not necessarily with the technology. Yes, technology does help at the workplace, sure. but then when it comes to you know, doing things together, they are, oh, you mean in, as yeah. far as like so it's the transition after after all these training courses they have to go to the workplace. How prepared are they? Now it's not just a matter of, you know. Right, right. Well, I would say in the it, it goes back to the team building. Yeah. So to facilitate team building, especially the perspective of this is coming from the online environment, but in a face-to-face -face environment, you're absolutely right. It's having those groups. So you have students work in groups. That that's a big thing. So group projects, or um, in many cases, of course, will have a final project where everyone works together and they have to give a presentation. So so many, especially courses I work with face to face, there's that what we call soft skills that are embedded in the courses to help the students to transition into the workplace as well. So I see what you're saying, as well as this being exposed to technically because that's important. I, you know, I, I understand what you that was a great question. I hope I answered. Yeah, yeah. I was just asking that because I used to have a boss who was based in Scotland. Right. He was based in Kenya. Yes. So he would do emails, uh -huh. and uh, some of my seniors were uncomfortable with the emails. Right. But when he comes and meets you face to face, they are like, "These are two different people." They are right. <laughs> there, there is a difference. That's yeah. true. That is true. Yeah. There is a difference. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. And with the, the point you're making, that's very good. I, I think we, what we're saying, saying, and I'm adding to it, and the fact that we look across all spectrums. Yes. 
So as a student, you in the classroom, in the face-to-face -face classroom, you have those soft skills where you're giving presentations, you're working in groups, then also you have to have the etiquette. So in other words, understanding, okay, I sent how to send an email. Etiquette in Zoom, you know, when you do Skype or we, we use Zoom quite a bit, uh, how, the etiquette when, or protocol when, when using those. So it's kind of across, across all the spectrums. That's good. Oh, thank you. Mm. Thanks for that. Thank you. Good fun.